Now, speaking during the Inclusive Growth Forum, Professor Mark Swilling of Salembosch University says ESCOM's plan of achieving 75% energy availability may be impossible. He says both old and newer power stations have had low energy availability contributing to the overall uh, availability energy factor. Uh, the energy availability factor, rather. Professor Mark Swilling joins us tonight. Prof, good evening to you. Thanks for your time. So there could be a, a number of reasons why you believe that this is an impossible task, but explain it for us in your own words. Well, firstly, uh, it's not ESCOM's plan. Okay, so, so sure. ESCOM has a plan. Um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a government policy uh, mandate, mandating the board to achieve a 75% energy, energy availability factor. That's a laudable goal, and it's definitely what we should aim to achieve. But if you want to achieve it within two years, that is what is going to be impossible. Um, and the reason is that you can only switch off the machines that need to be repaired and thoroughly overhauled, and some of them closed, if you have new generation capacity on the grid. And that new generation capacity needs to be built very quickly. The only way you can do that is to build renewables. Now, the minister and all the necessary decisions have been made to procure a large amount of renewable energy over the next two years, uh, around 16 gigawatts uh, and just above. And that is very, very, very significant because even if there are 10 new, 10 gigawatts of new generation capacity within two years, that will create the space for ESCOM to then start properly repairing the machines. But it will only really start when it is possible to have the space to switch off a significant number of machines for long enough to thoroughly repair them. Of course, there is something to be said about the act itself of setting targets that are practically impossible to reach. What does that say to us? Is it a mischaracterization, misunderstanding of the problems that ESCOM is facing right now? Well, as I said, it's, 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 it's uh, um, um, uh, coal-fired power stations should be operating, especially if they're new, at around 80%. Uh, we have a number of old power stations, a uh, total of 8.2 gigawatts, that are supposed to be closed down in the next two or three years. You can't expect old power stations, just like you can't expect an old car, to perform as if they are brand new. Uh, so you, sh you, you should expect the energy the availability factor to go down. But we also have new power stations that are not performing adequately. And we have relatively new ones, which are also not performing adequately, but we have Two very good performers, Matimba and Latabo power stations, are over 80%. So it's, we can do it. That proves that we can do it, and we should be aiming to achieve it. But they've been so badly abused. They haven't been looked after over many years, and it's going to take a lot to fix them. But you can't just fix them while they're operating. You can't fly an airplane and fix it at the same time. You have to land it, put it in a hangar, and fix it. That's what is required with these machines, because you can't do that until you've got an alternative to keep the lights on. So the point that, that I'm, I'm really pointing to, uh, Professor Swilling, is does this not set ESCOM up for failure from the get-go? Uh, again, given the complexity of the challenges that, that they face and, uh, you know, looking at the work that you've done in, in your other hat as, uh, you know, w with, with, the, with the NPC, surely then when targets are set for an entity like ESCOM, they must take into account the full environment in which this entity is operating and look realistically at, at what is possible. Otherwise, we look at a situation where, uh, you know, South Africans are going to be in for ongoing disappointment. Yes, I'm, I'm talking purely in my academic capacity F based fair on enough. my own yes. research. Yes. Um, so so, so just, to, just to make that clear, and I agree with you, it would be better to say, let's make sure that ESCOM uh, prevents the energy availability factor dropping below 60%. That would be the best we could hope for during the next two years in realistic terms. And then tell people to be prepared for load shedding and to do what is necessary to cope with the load shedding. I can say that as an academic. It's not that easy. 
for others to say that. Um, and, and, and then make sure that the renewables get off the ground, the, they reach financial close, all the contracts happen, all the, the environmental impact assessments done, and these things get built quickly over the next two years. Then things start looking up. All right. That's when things will start to change. And that's when we can really be hopeful that load shedding will start to come to an end. But I don't think it's, again, in my academic capacity, I don't think it's useful to set targets that we know are not going to be achievable um, in in, you know, based on the evidence and the technical reality. Mm. Professor Mark Suling, we leave it there for tonight. He's with Stellenbosch University.